Hey guys, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is D'Lo and I've got a surprise for you. I have Comic Man Jake here from the channel, Comic Man Jake. <laughs> Jake, how you doing? Doing well. D'Lo, how you doing? I'm doing well, bro. Good to see you again. It's uh, It's been a little bit. You are on a uh, slight hiatus, is that correct, from, from making a little bit of content? Yeah, life happened and, uh, you know, um, my computer kind of died and fritzed out, so I had to switch everything over, so... Uh, stuff's coming on, on the way. Uh, Got to get the new programs and everything. So come probably March, stuff will start coming out. Heck yeah, dude! I'm looking forward to that, man. You are you are my go to if I wanna if I wanna know more about a comic or a recommendation or something. I'm always going to your channel. So I really appreciate that. Everyone, <laughs> follow this guy, subscribe to his channel. Um, but we're gonna talk about something that I consider a field of expertise for you, <laughs> and I think it probably is fair to say that you're an expert in in Green Lantern, is that correct? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll just say that, yeah. <laughs> we'll just say right. that, yeah. We'll just say that. We'll, we'll go with that. Rocking the humility, bro. I appreciate that. Well, hey, uh, and uh, your your logo is uh, lo kind of modeled after the Green Lantern, too, is it not? Yes, it is. Um, I mean, it was one of the things that I, I grew up. The guy who wrote Green Lantern that made it popular is Jeff Johns. He's from Detroit. Yep. I'm from uh, Michigan. I'm from Michigan. Unfortunately, he's a Spartan and I'm a Wolverine. I mean, that's the only thing we can't get along with. But uh, other than <laughs> that, he's one of my favorite comic writers and he's written the best Green Lantern run ever. And ever since then, I've read any type of Green Lantern. Robert Venditti. I just finished Grant Morrison's run. I'll be doing a kind of a little uh, review on that, which is interesting at the same right. time. So, Heck yeah, yeah dude. I did enjoy yes, yes. This is, this is modeled after it. Yes. Yeah, and I think we may have discussed this in a previous uh, conversation before, but um, Jeff Johns is – he's not just a writer. He's actually been involved with a lot of the film and TV projects with DC as well as either a consultant. But in, in recent years uh, at Warner Brothers, they had put him into a position um, at, at Warner Bros where he was on the board, but he didn't have any creative influence. And uh, that was when DC films were kind of sucking. Uh, at the time, you know, which is unfortunate. I love the DC films. I love Man of Steel. Um, Wonder Woman's great. Uh, I enjoyed parts of Suicide Squad, parts of Batman vs Superman, parts of Justice League. But there was clearly a division between the filmmakers and what they wanted to do and what the studios were pushing on them. Uh, and when when that all got changed and shaken up, Warner Bros got a new guy, Walter Hamada, in there who basically fired everybody at the top, including Jeff Johns. But Jeff Johns, he kept on because he let him. Uh, he gave him his own production company and said, you're going to be the exclusive, one of the exclusive primary producers that's going to help write and create on the ground and in the story rooms with all of the DC projects for continuity. Cause they need a Kevin Feige and Walter Hamada said, Jeff Johns is the guy that knows DC better than anybody. That's true. Yeah. He, uh, he actually was the executive producer for, um, the Shazam and for yep. Aquaman in which he has both written, comics based off the runs if you if you actually read mm -hmm. his uh little run that he had for the new 52 of shazam it's actually like almost line for line except take out black adam and focus more on dr silva and yeah it, it's 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 literally the comic from it and aquaman i mean he had a four four volume run in which he didn't finish it it, it let it ended with this war of the seven seas and I've and we were all hoping what was going to happen, but then the guy who did I think it was Cullen Bunn like took it over and didn't do anything with it. And right. this kind of answered to me that kind of answered his War of the Seven Seas kind of thing. Yeah, dude. And it's it's actually it's really interesting too because both of those films come out after the Justice League film, and it was right after the Justice League film that that Walter Hamada came in and pushed everybody else out. That was interfering with the DC films. You know, they, they were saying, well, Avengers is doing this. We need to do an Avengers film instead of saying, hey, they built it from the ground up, took their time with it. We need to take our time yeah. and build our characters, build our stories. And so um, they, they shook it up right after that. And that's why Jeff Johns is now, he's got that creative influence on both Shazam and Aquaman because it's because of that, that Walter Hamada guy. He's also the same guy that said two things can happen at once, like Cyborg being played by Joyvin Wade on Doom Patrol, 
that was announced right after Walter Hamada got into the office. He said, screw the rule where – you remember in Arrow when they were starting that Suicide Squad thing? Yep. And that, it was so cool. They had Michael Rowe in there as Deadshot. Um, it was a really cool se- like run. Um, it was basically – like if you didn't know anything about comics, it was a, a guy with really sick arm guns and and pistols versus a, a guy with sick skills with it with a bow and arrow. You know, and it's like these two like deadly assassins going after each other, finding some commonalities, finding a reason to kind of like uh you know bridge the gap a little bit, side with each other for a quick moment, even though they have almost nothing in common. <laughs> and it was just so it was fun. But what happened was then then the, the movies got greedy and said, we want to do Suicide Squad ourselves. And so then they said, we're going to make a Suicide Squad film. And the old leadership before Walter Hamada said, we think the fans are too stupid to discern the difference between the TV and the films. So yeah. no Suicide Squad for the TV, even though they were doing it first. So then Michael Rowe and all them got canned and – Ever, and the Arrow crew was like, what the heck? We were in the middle of our season. You know, like we were trying to get something done. But then they said, nope, got to get those characters out. Katana was out. Um, uh, uh, Michael Rose, Deadshot was out. The entire crew, they had a Harley Quinn that was laughing from a jail cell they never showed, but they alluded yep. to. They said, no, we're taking all of that. We're doing a film. Will Smith, you know, Margot Robbie, everybody, which I enjoyed Suicide Squad. But the facts are the facts. They wouldn't let two things happen at once unless it was a primary character being the Flash. The Flash could have his own show because he already existed and the Flash show was doing really, really well. So they said, that can stay. We're going to still do Flash the movies, but we don't like it. And then no crossovers, no Grant Gustin in the films. No, And that was a big deal. Yeah. Uh, do you remember that? Remember all that? Oh, I remember. I was pissed. I was pissed. Uh, Everyone was pissed. Gus isn't playing for Flash. I I don't know how this is going to go. Ezra Miller? Who the frick is he? I know. Yeah, and everyone was, was like, everyone was super upset. I have no idea who this guy is. Yeah. Wait, it was, wasn't he on, like, what was it? The Sunflower? I don't know. Something indie. Right, yeah. The Wallflower thing or how to uh, yeah, be in a Wallflower. Like that. Yep. And, uh, and so they wouldn't let that happen. They wouldn't let two things happen at once. But Walter Hamada, I think it was a month or two after he got into the office, they made the announcement that jo- Jovian or whatever, Jovian Wade was playing Cyborg in addition to there already being a Cyborg in in uh, Justice League. And so it's like, wait a minute. They just shifted the game. And I made a video on it and a bunch of people were starting to recognize, hey, there's doubles now. They, they didn't let doubles happen before. Uh, they had taken off uh, Manu Bennett as Deathstroke for the Justice League because they didn't think that you could have Manu Bennett be – Deathstroke in the show and also have Joe Manganiello in the after credit scene of Justice League. So uh, the new leadership said, screw that. And they brought Manu back and they brought, you know, like they brought uh, in the two cyborgs. And now with the crisis on infinite earths, we really get, we really get the idea. Now the clear and obvious picture is that Walter Hamada said, if, if it works in the comics, it'll work on the screen. You can get it done. There can be two of everything. Infinite Earth. Awesome. Just, just, yeah. just saying right now, the crossover was like I was watching it from my. I was like, oh, it's on. I went to my parents and watched it. Yeah. And at that time, I was like, the first episode happened, and I was like, the first five <laughs> seconds, they just confirmed everything. Yeah. The first five seconds, they literally just said, yeah, what you've been thinking, everything, the DCU, the DC, you know, streaming service, everything. Yeah, that's all connected. I was like, yep. Finally. <laughs> yeah, dude. It was, it was everything. It was so, so cool. I was like, what the heck they got? Like, I'm a huge fan, huge fan of the Adam West 1966, like the old TV show. I love like, so I love a, like a good, clean, you know, like silly kind of like a get, get smart type of TV show, you know, get smart or, or like, uh, or obviously the Adam West Batman. It's silly. It's fun. Uh, it's cheesy. It's a stage set, you know, but it's, Awesome. I'm like, dude, give me some more of that. They canonized that universe. They canonized the 1989 Michael Keaton yep. Batman. They canonized pretty much everything they possibly Birds could. Birds of Prey. They Birds of Prey. Every Smallville. If you have a show that has happened or a movie that has happened yep. in DC, DC history, they basically said, yep, that's a different Earth. Yep. It's, and, and they also use the verbiage that you take every – Every single universe multiplied by possibility and multiplied by possibility means that even if they destroyed it, (laughs) 
There's a billion in, more, a billion infinite number more of the same universe. So it's like, even if they ended up killing something in the crossover, it doesn't mean it's gone. It doesn't mean that it's dead because there's infinite of that earth. You know, it's like, that's what infinite means. <laughs> yep. And then you multiply infinite by infinite possibilities. So it's pretty crazy. So um, anyway, all that, all that to say, the, cro the crossover did one thing that I thought was spectacular. At the very end, they gave us a tease for something that was announced last month or maybe a month and a half ago at this point. I can't remember exactly when that was. But they announced that um, – that uh, what, what was his name? Not Jeff Johns. It was uh, Greg Berlanti who does all of the, all of the shows for DC TV, whether it's the, the CW-verse. He's involved with tons of the, uh, the DC Universe stuff. Uh, pretty much everything live action and, and a little bit more than that. He was also the, direct, the uh, producer and one of the writers – for the Green Lantern film, which had Ryan Reynolds, yeah. a lot of people were like, "Oh, that sucked," you yeah. know. Whatever. And it there yeah. was clear and obvious flaws in that well, film. Yeah, we can go into deeper than that. I mean, honestly, like you know, the one thing that they could have done is they took the most the flaw of that movie was they took the most complex villain, Parallax, and yeah. made it a wimp. I'm not gonna lie, they made him like very. Yep. And I get what they were going off of. They were trying to go off of um, his, I think it was his year one of Green Lantern that he did. And right. I, he could have done something better. Yeah. Honestly, he could have took a better storyline. But hey. Was that was that the run when they came back from like after, after Hal had kind of destroyed pretty much all of the Green Lanterns in Oa? It, no, it, it so, came down and picked up Kyle. Then they they started that, and then there was a huge dip away from Hal Jordan for a while. Then he comes back. They kind of rebooted it. So there was, was that there, it. There was Green Lantern Rebirth, uh, not like the DC Rebirth one, but there was one called Rebirth, and that's uh, where uh, how that's where uh, uh, Jeff John starts his run. Is he yeah. starts by bringing back Hal Jordan back to life because he died. He actually right, yeah, he got he had died. He came back, and then like. They did a whole kind of run in his first album, and then like midway through, they're like, he needs an origin. It's Secret Origins. That's what it's called, Secret Origins. So they did Secret Origins, and that's when they uh, basically said, this is the definitive story of how, how Jordan became Green Lantern. Right. He did the, he did the, uh, he also did the same thing with like um, with Superman. He, he made Secret Origin. A, uh, he made a, an origin story for Superman. There were so many origin stories. He made one. And I think most recently now, I think that still is the current, this is what how Superman was uh, made. I actually yeah. have reading glasses. <laughs> it start, every From time to time, I actually get, um, like, my eyes start to strain. So I'm yep. trying to wear these more. These are these are I, these are blue lenses. So like, if I don't wear these, I, I I my eye will start twitching. I swear, bro. That's like that's what's happening to me. You'll notice almost like this like half the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bucks. I, yeah, I, I think these were approximately that much. Yeah. I'm I'm actually kind of a cheap guy. I don't like to spend a ton of money unless it's gonna be like tech for computers or something. <laughs> All right, that should be fine. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah, that's it. I got. That's all I got. I mean, yeah, you were going on a tangent. So yeah, and like the fact that the guy kind of co-wrote it is kind of scaring me a little bit. I mean, he's he 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 knows how to produce. I don't know if he knows how to write. We'll right. See. Yeah. Well, I think I think he was. Um, he's he's called the showrunner. Yeah. I so think that, that know, assumed. Like, the, the one thing we're saying is. And spoilers, if you have not seen the whole Crisis on Infinite Earths, but at the end they show a light, they show Earth, I think is 18, I believe it is, show a light going up, going to Oa, you see the whole Green Lantern kind of movie kind of thing, con confirming that there is going to be the Green Lantern series, and yeah, right. it's going to be sick. I'm just saying it right now. Dude. I canceled my DC streaming service just to get HBO. It, it's looking so so good, dude. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so excited. Um, if I, uh, I I had taken some notes on this, uh, let me see where where did it goes. Greg Berlanti's HBO, Crisis and Infinite Earths. 
Let me see if I can find the uh, – okay, I think I found the notes. So green arrow, green lantern, green. Green lantern's Earth-12. So Earth – yeah, Earth-12. Earth okay, that 18 is 12. Okay. Now, the interesting thing here is that before the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover, they had announced that uh, Green Lantern was going to take place in CW canon. Now, um, everyone was like, oh, so it's going to be another CW show. So there was a lot of people that were frustrated because they don't like where Arrow's gone recently. And there's some people that were frustrated because they don't like m most of them. There's a ton of people that love the CW, so I'm not trying to bag on that. But a lot of what I was seeing online from, from some of my friends – was and my contacts was that they were like oh man it's going to be in the cw i thought it was going to be an hbo like separate thing well it kind of is because everything in the cw verse crossover was a separate thing that was brought together for a special occasion and now are all canonized in these in the arrowverse so even though Stephen amell's arrow was not in the 1989 batman it's its own thing that is now canonized in the CW verse. You know what I yep. mean? So like the CW verse basically says everything exists. Yep. And that doesn't mean that it's going to be the same exact thing, the same story plot, the same writing style, any no, of that. It, it just means that everything is, everything can touch anything basically. Right. If like, <laughs> if they want to do it, they can do it. Yeah. They can, they, they can reference people now and they can say, Oh yeah, Oliver Queen, and it could, and they could show Stephen Amell if he wanted to jump back in. They could do a whole bunch of stuff if they wanted to, right? And to me, that's that's a huge, like, leap. Like, it's a leap. It's but it's thank you. It's thank you so much mm -hmm. to to Walter Hamada, to Jeff Johns, to Mark Guggenheim, and to Greg Berlanti for all putting their heads together. And first of all, from the guys at the bottom shooting upward and saying, "Listen." The fans have been asking for this for a really long time. Please let us make this happen. And then the guys at the top for saying, go for it. You know, like that's that's the <laughs> that's what effectively happened, whether it was months or years or a day, you know, a quick phone call. Thank you for making that happen because that was sick. It was so fun. Yeah. Um, so not to linger, but we just you mentioned that at the end of the crossover, Green Lantern not only was confirmed to be on Earth-12, but there was a visual reference that showed a Green Lantern fly to Oa and then show the planet, zoom in on the place, and then it shows the actual, like, gathering of the Guardians there. And they're all they're all there. There's, like, a whole flood of these lanterns congregated on Oa. So we actually got to see a visual, even though it was quick and we didn't see any faces. Um, they, they're ready to, they're ready to start working on this thing. I mean, they, they put enough effort to show the fans on crisis, this thing, even though it was just announced not too long ago, you know, like, yeah, th those are probably clips though from, I'm not gonna lie. Those are probably clips from the Green Lantern movie, but yeah, they are confirmed with that thing. They are confirming that yes, this is going to happen and it's going to be yeah. kind of like this. Right. Which is great. You know, and I mean, honestly, as a Green Lantern fan. I've been waiting for a series since I, you know, got into Green Lantern. I've been waiting for some yeah. sort. Of, I've watched the animated series. I've Heck watched yeah. the movie. I've watched a whole bunch of stuff. And I mean, I've been waiting. I mean, I watched freaking Justice League just to see uh, what was his, that one episode where um, John Stewart becomes Hal Jordan for a quick second and then he comes back. Yeah, dude. <laughs> there's, a season, there's there's things where he does that, and he's. I mean. I've watched all the Green Lantern anime, just everything. And I mean, to see this happen as a as a Green Lantern fan is one exciting and two yeah. terrifying because there's so much that can go right and there's so much that can go wrong. Yep. In this, so <laughs> and it, the stories are so vast too. That's another thing is like it that I think I think trying to make a Green Lantern movie was a flaw from the start because mm -hmm. it's how how can you possibly hope to please any fan of Green Lantern? When you're telling a start, middle, finish in two hours or or three hours, even you, I mean, you'd have to do you'd have to do like like Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame, you know, mm -hmm. like you'd have to do like three big time, uh, all encompassing, multiple angles storyline films in order to tell anything close to an accurate Green Lantern story because it's so it's so deep it's so vast they tell uh, they do a good job in the Green Lantern of telling the villain stories too you okay. know so like the thing about Jeff Johns that I like so everyone loves about Marvel like there's, there's secret endings you know what the secret ending they, they tease something and you go 
Yeah, yeah. Well, like Jeff Johns and Green Lanterns, the thing I love that he does, and it's a, it's a staple in anything he does, he doesn't put, he'll put something in there that you will be like, why the heck would he do that? 12 issues later, he'll reference it and it'll be something huge. And you're like, holy cow. And yep. each ending was like always like some sort of shock factor, like, oh, there's a Red Lantern. We've never seen this thing before. Holy mm -hmm. cow, they're introducing the Red Lanterns. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. Like the first volume is talking about Sinestro War. Yeah. Which, <laughs> which like, no one, it's, it, 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 oh, if they go Sinestro War route, man, that would be the most epic fight. Dude, it'd be that, so great. It's, it's literally, imagine all the villains, the biggest, baddest villains having yellow lantern rings and like a couple of the green, a couple of the superheroes having green lantern rings. I know, dude. And just going at it. It's bonkers, dude. Like, it is, it is the most, uh, I, I think textbook definition of a comic of a, of a what a comic book fantasy fiction epic is is green lantern it's like the perfect def because a comic book a, fi a fiction is something that is not real something that uh it, it sparks your imagination to go somewhere that you normally wouldn't or or probably can't can't in real life it's supposed to take you somewhere that is the entire idea of the green lantern core it is an it, uh, an army of of people that have the power of will and imagination and and as a weapon as a tool shield communication you know like and all this kinds of crazy stuff green lantern is probably one of the more if for people that don't read comics is one of the most underrated characters because that's the crazy thing about it is so um so jeff johns was writing green lantern and then they started doing the new 52. The new 52, I've, I've said it in my channel a lot of times. The new 52 was basically DC saying, "Hey, we want you ch to to say, to uh, imagine we're rebooting everything. This is a start. This is everything's origin. You know, whatever." The only right. two people they didn't do it was Green Lantern and Batman, because you can't change Batman. And Green Lantern was so popular at the time. Jeff Johns was still writing, and he was like, "I'm not starting over. Sorry." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally, man. I, I actually have um, the article here. If you wanted, to, if you wanted to discuss this really quick, sure. The, uh, the the Greg. I'm gonna see if I can switch this over. Let me know if you have any issues on your side. I'm going to share my screen with you right now. Let me know sure. if you can see it. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, great. So here, are, are you able to see my mouse as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. So right now, up here, the title. Greg Berlanti, Green Lantern, HBO Max series detail teased at TCA. So what we have here is HBO uh, Max head original content. Uh, her name is Sarah Aubrey. So her title is kind of bonkers. It's HBO head, HBO Max head of original content. Um, and then she revealed at the TCA uh, press corps some details about Greg Berlanti's upcoming Green Lantern series for the soon to launch streaming service. So HBO Max has not come out yet, but they want this to be one of their flagship things. Obviously they know oh, yeah. com comic book shows are a huge draw right now. Um, you ask like, if you ask your parents, if it, you know, like, or, or people that are your parents age about comic books, most of them are going to think you're a basement dwelling nerd, you know, <laughs> but like people nowadays, if you don't know anything about comic books, you're basically a social outcast. You know, it's like it's flipped in the last, you know, whatever, 15 years or something. Basically, since movies became the mainstream and comic book movies have taken over the industry, you know. And so uh, with this, they, they want that to be their draw. The, the, the streaming service that's coming out, HBO Max, they want to make sure that there's something out there to draw the crowd and compete against Disney, who has Marvel. And DC is, is within the branch of Warner Bros because HBO is a subsidiary of, of Warner Bros., parent company owned but um which is why they have that that deal with with dc um kind of like disney it's it's kind of like um like like marvel and pixar mm -hmm. having 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 a deal you know coming together because disney's parent the parent company it's the same idea and um and then they say here let me, let me read the quote it's going to span several decades speaking of the story of the show it's going to span several decades and focus on two stories about Green Lanterns on Earth, and then as well as one in space going into the Sinestro story. So this this right here, 
I, I know she says two here, but she's speaking of two on Earth specifically and then one in space. And I, I'm guessing that the one in space is going to be the Sinestro story. Could be. I mean, so it depends on what they do. If, if they're going to make it like an actual, like it's already happened, like we already know who the heck is Hal Jordan and who the heck is, you know, if they're going to start that way, which is a very uh, big way to go, which they can. Um, it could be also, if I'm reading this correctly, uh, one in space going to the Sinestro. So it could be two, so two, folks again, two uh, Green Lanterns on Earth, Hal and John, because those are the first two. Right. And then, I, would I would hope so. And then the third one might be Sinestro or it might be someone else. I mean, it might, you got that picture right there in the back. I mean, there's Saronic Natu. There's a whole bunch of these. There's, there's Guy Gardner. I mean, right. They got I. I mean, Saronic Natu is basically Ion. He's the living embodiment of Will, um, and he's basically the the story of what if Superman became a Green Lantern. That's that's the answer. Is Saronic Natu? No, that's Dang. not right. It's, it's not I, right. I've never I've never known that character. That's one that's new to me. Yeah, the guy right next to um, Kilowog. Yeah, right here on the left. Yep. He looks like a black haired guy, Gardner. Yep. He's he is a uh, Daxamite. Oh, nice. So yeah, he's like he's like Monel and Supergirl. Yep, he's Daxamite. Sick, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. So like, in uh, in, uh, in Sinestro Wars, Superboy Prime versus him. It's just, it's an amazing story. I would love to read that. Heck yeah, dude. That's cool. So that that actually gives me more to fan cast, bro. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I do the, oh, yeah. I do the, a, you could go. Yeah, I could. I could give you the whole list of who yeah. you could put. <laughs> oh, bro, I would love. I, I'm gonna do more for sure because there was a lot of characters we didn't cover in my in my initial fan cast because we were only doing like six characters or something for the first one, mm -hmm. and that's nothing. You know, <laughs> the yeah. Green Lantern Corps is vast. Like, I mean, almost every single one of these characters in this picture is a main character. Almost. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. And as far as the show goes, it looks like they're going to try to tell a threefold story, you know, like kind of like Lord of the Rings, um, you know, like you follow you follow like Frodo and the Hobbits on one. Then uh, when they when they separate, you know, you're also following um, the, the primary like uh, the primary fellowship with Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, and then the Hobbits split up. Now you're following, you know, like Pippin or, or Mary, you know, and um, it's, it's just interesting to see how they're able to split those stories and tell them and then weave them back together. I think that's probably more or less what they're going to do with the green lantern series based on what we know now from the show, from the, uh, um, the, the head of original content over at HBO max, Sarah Aubrey. Um, and so uh, again, to just re recap, this. this is also for my own notes. Um, it's going to span several decades is an interesting thing that they say. Do you think that spanning several decades is going to also involve telling the Alan Scott story? Here's the thing about Alan Scott that no one gets. Alan Scott is – so when they originally did uh, his story, his story is based off mysticism. It's not based off space. He's a completely different Green Lantern. Like there's Alan Scott who is like more about the earth. So there's, there's elements like you've heard of the red. You've heard of the gray. You've heard of – the green and uh you might have heard that from like uh poison ivy the green right it, 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 that's what he channels is the green of the earth ah so, so it's like completely they can that's the same but, as like, swamp thing like, right it's a completely different cent separate entity it's a completely separate thing that powers that ring it's not willpower it's mysticism and that's what knowing that's what a lot of people get confused when they say alan scott I'm like yeah alan scott is that but alan scott really isn't a true he he was the first green lantern but then they wanted to do more when when the space when Sputnik went up they wanted to do more space stories so they just kept on so they introduced Hal Jordan right so then if i can point this out on my notes as well forgive my notes cuz they're crude and rudimentary um and i was, this was from a different video as well but i also i was taking notes during the crisis and one of the things that was very interesting they pointed out was here in the highlight here i don't know if you see this Did but Earth-21, Doom Patrol, and then also um, Swamp Thing. They went out of their way to show everything that was about to get a series. So uh, at the end, they weren't just showing things that still exist. They were showing things that are coming up. 
So mm-hmm. they were showing Stargirl and her team was Earth 2. They're showing the JSA. They showed yeah. the JSA, basically. Uh, not Star, right. Uh, uh, Stargirl. Yeah, but it's it's going to be her show, though. That's why I said yeah. that. Yeah, so. She's a part of the JSA, so yeah. Right, yeah. And so then uh, um, Earth 12, you know, being Green Lantern, that's a show that's coming up soon. They also showed Titans, which has season three coming up, Doom Patrol, which has season two coming up. They did, the two interesting things to me were that they canonized Swamp Thing again and Brandon Routh Superman again at the end. So they they went out of their way to show that Brandon Routh Superman is still in existence on his own Earth, not just in the Earth they all went to, which means it says to me that maybe DC's not done with Brandon Routh. I- See, and that's what I don't know because he's written that in, in, in interviews that this was the way of finishing it. He wanted to end the character this way. Did he say that about like, Superman, or did he say that about Superman? Superman. He did. Yeah. Okay, because I know I, I thought he was saying saying that about um about Adam. His, Adam, because I know the yeah. what this is last season for that one. I don't think I, I think he meant. I don't know. I mean, maybe he's. He, I remember him saying like this was going to be like the the like. The conclusion he wanted for Superman. Oh, well, no, yeah. I I thought it was a great conclusion. I thought it, it did him some solid justice. He looked awesome. Uh, he he had p- a pivotal part to play in in the show, both as Adam and as um, Superman from Superman Returns. So it works as an ending. But I just thought it was weird though because they then, like all the other things, they canonized with upcoming content. They did that, and then the second thought there was, like you mentioned, the green with Alan with Alan Scott, Poison Ivy. The green is a huge part of the conversation with Swamp Thing, of course, and um, with Swamp Thing, that was canceled previously. But at the end of Crisis, they show that there is more Swamp Thing that he still exists. Mm-hmm. Now that doesn't explicitly mean that he's going to get another season, but I think it's a pretty strong indicator that. They're getting their funding back, and once they do, they're going to make another season because everybody loved Swamp Thing. So I finished that. <laughs> you didn't finish that? No. Oh, dude, I got, dude, Did I, you... I I canceled it like I canceled it a while ago because I just kept on like, uh, yeah, we didn't finish it. It was, was good it... though. I just, I just, I just, I just uh, life happened and I couldn't. Yeah, for sure. I, I hear you, man. I, what, ha- what happened for me, I think, was there was a bunch of films coming out around the same time Swamp Thing had been launched. And so I started watching those and then talking about those on the channel and stuff. So for me, that was that was kind of like I just got busy. Um, but I'm just – I'm really excited uh, and, and fascinated because there's so much that is also coming up that very likely will cross over as well. This is – the Shazam 2 opens four months after Ro- the, the Black Adam movie. Oh, yeah. And uh, which is it's really cool because again it's another Je- it's another Jeff Johns um, collaborated project, and then you know Black Adam of course being Dwayne the Rock Johnson's you know love child he's been trying to foster baby since he was like it was mm-hmm. since back in 2011 when he mm-hmm. got on contract for the the character and then they were like wait we don't know what to do with the movie though <laughs> so we well, have been... to introduce Shazam before you introduce Black Adam that's exactly exactly you just you just got to. And um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. But there's a lot to look forward to here. Um, it being inside the, the Arrowverse canon does not mean that it's going to be inside the Arrowverse itself, just that it's part of the multiverse, which is literally everything DC, including the DCEU now, given that Ezra Miller's Flash was canonized as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited, man. Who do you, if, if you could pick um, a particular storyline for them to kind of start with, would you would you prefer them to start with uh, character introductions from the beginning, or would you rather them just kind of jump into the story, um, buddy cop style with maybe like John and Hal, or who would you want, and what do you want to see there? Um, hmm. I mean, there's two ways they could go, and the way I would want because I would. I'd understand either way if it happens. So if they decided to just jump into Buddy Hal with John and him, with John and Hal, I would understand that fully. But I don't know if everyone else would. 
So right. Well, no, no, no. I think about it, actually, they could do that and to do like what they do, what they've done with Titans, which is like have an episode where they do an origin. So I actually think they will probably go that route where it's kind of they say it's going to span several decades. Um, they could mean like several core members because it starts off with two. It starts off well. It starts off with one. House first, then John comes, then Guy Gardner, then Kyle Rayner, then um, Simon Baz, and now Jessica Cruz. Right. And you know it's it's the it's they could go with the earth growing on that. But at the same time, they are saying they're going to bring in Sinestro. So the thing that it, that no one's watched, uh, because Green Lantern movie was horrible, but there was a secret ending at the end yeah. where Mark Strong actually puts on the Fear Lantern core and, be, and wears the whole Sinestro core outfit. Yeah. And it was awesome. But... um. I loved Mark Strong as as Sinestro. I think that was the biggest bummer was that they have to now recast him. Yeah, he was okay. He was he he was an arrogant. He he kind of was a little bit of Sinestro, but like, I can't. Ah, I gotta look into who I would, I would say again, because there was someone I had in mind a while back who I was Luke like, Evans. Perfect Sinestro, but um, <clears throat> I mean. I really hope that like this thing just succeeds. It, 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 my book, I don't care where they start. I just hope it succeeds. Because right. as a guy who's like again, biggest Green Lantern fan here, you know, I, I want to see my favorite comic come to life and to have people like come up to me and talk to me about this comic because I've been recommending it for years. I mean, I have all three of Jet John's Green Lantern books. Those are like seventy bucks a piece. Right. And they're the best things I've ever read. I mean, I got to reread them again. I mean, I've lent it to friends. They've said that it's amazing. It's it's something. I mean, Green uh, Sinestro War is one of my favorites because when it, you know that's when it introduced because the whole if they go into Sinestro War, I mean that that really goes into like the description of Oa and the Book of Oa and like the the protocols that they had to go through. Like in the whole uh, when the event happens, like Sinestro comes in, the Green Lanterns can't have lethal force. They can't they, do anything. They so they're literally run, They're defending and running. Hmm. And it's not until the Guardians are like, we need to change this. So they change it. And then like everyone of the rings are like, Lethal Fourth is, is, is authorized. And they just go to town. Yeah. Oh, dude. I got I to gotta read that, man. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty I behind on reading, to, man. I would, I would not go to Comixology. I would go and buy them. Just buy an omnibus. Buy the first one. If you like it, buy the second one. Yeah. I love I love doing that. Just getting whole like chunks where it's just uh, uh, an entire run of stories. Mm -hmm. I love that kind of stuff. I did that with the uh, um, the injustices. Oh yeah, so, like, injustice is an amazing comic. I love injustice, bro. I, I the injustice comics have got almost. I think we have all of them except for the last the last one, and so we're waiting we're waiting on that one. Um, not waiting, but we just need to go get it. Uh, oh, I wanted I wanted to show you something. If you have a second, I got something. What? I thought you might I thought you might like it. Give me what? one sec. Just get it real quick. Bro, let me see if I can show you these real quick. Can you hear me? Pops. Yeah, dude. I think I might have shown you this one already. That's from the new 52 one. Yep. Yep. This is a Jim Lee one. You can mm -hmm. see the com the comic art on the back as well. Mm -hmm. Him and Batman. That's, right that's, when, that's when he's literally saying, holy shit, Batman's real. Yeah. <laughs> I love that part. But I got this one for Christmas. I know you haven't seen this one from me yet. Check this out. Oh, I've been looking for that one. Damn. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I got Kilowog, Guy Gardner, and Chip. Yeah. Dude, I was I saw this one online. Look at the art. You got see you can see Oa and everything. Mm hmm Or is that um no, that's, that's, that's Oa. Okay. I couldn't tell if that was Oa or if that was the planet. The living planet. The one that's like Bogo. uh Bogo? Yeah, yeah, Bogo, yeah. Heck yeah, dude. They're not going to probably introduce Mogo because Oa gets destroyed 
and then Mogo becomes the home world. Yeah. Because Mogo is literally a a Lantern a, Core member. He yeah, is it's, a it's literally player. a member. <laughs> yeah. He's like he's like the DC equivalent to um uh what's it called? Ego the Living Planet in Marvel. The Marvel equivalent? Well, he yeah, yeah. So like DC's yeah, yeah. equivalent to the Marvel character uh Ego. Kind of, yeah. Uh yeah. He was like their answer to it. And I think given given if they were to fight, you'd have to go lantern, bro. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it'd have to be, dude. Mogo just wipes planets out. Like, hey, <laughs> we got a living planet. And they're like, it's kind of funny because it's an extra grows. They're like, yeah, so do we. And they're like, oh shit. Yeah, dude. I'm I'm so excited because I like I know you've probably been waiting a lot longer than I have, but for the for the for the TV show, I'm actually quite excited because Greg Berlanti has done a lot of good things. He's done a lot of not so good things, but he's done uh, he's done more good than I think. Or am I saying the right name, Greg Berlanti? I think it's his name. I don't know. But I mean, the, the thing that makes me nervous is he was the one that produced and wrote the movie that flopped like crazy. Yeah, but that was a while ago, and he had. He didn't know it, whether or not you know they were gonna be able to do good editing at the time. Um, it is, I think. I think they tried to bite off more than they were prepared to chew. Mm -hmm. But they've had a lot of practice since then. I mean, that was that that movie came out before they had the Flash, before they had DC's Legends of Tomorrow, before they had any of these things. And now that same studio is ready and prepared to knock out some killer CGI, even if it's mm -hmm. low budget. As long as they don't go as low budget as Batwoman, it should be fine. <laughs> no, no. With HBO, they're going to go high on budget. I mean, it, oh, I mean, yeah, for sure. already quoted it as it, it's going to be the highest budgeted series yeah. from what I've heard. For, so, at, at least for DC, it's definitely one of their most expensive projects they've done so far. Um, and uh, uh, what was it? The um, Berlant Berlanti struck a deal with Warner Bros. TV. Uh, which I believe the deal is worth four hundred million in cash guarantees, regardless of whether or not they fail or succeed, um, and which is pretty good. I mean, that's a pretty that's a pretty solid deal. That's going to involve multiple projects, not just the Green Lantern show, of course. And that's his cut. That's not even like that's not the budget for the film or for the show or anything like that. I think it's going to do really well though, and it's going to probably um, start. It's going to start at a very conservative spending level. And then after the first season, if it gets enough viewership and people are liking it, they'll they'll be willing to go all in. It's kind of like what they did for Titan season one. Um, it was fairly low budget. They they kept. I mean, the lighting sucked. the uh, The editing was okay at best, but it had content that was pretty. Story was you know, amazing enjoyable and the story was great and so that was what was a big draw people stuck around when season two was coming out they had corrected most all of the issues they had in the first season as far as editing problems and and uh that sort of thing and it just got better I, it was just better all around and i think that that's what we can probably uh hope to expect from the green lantern show is they already know we can't screw up green lantern a second time dc yeah, won't they better not <laughs> oh, they're not it, it better not. I'm going on strike. Damn it! I know they're not going to have a chance from the fans. The fans are going to tell them, "Screw you!" You know, if 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 they bomb this Green Lantern show, fans oh, yeah. are going to be like, "We don't trust you with Green Lantern anymore." Sorry, you know, it's like it's like Fox with the Fantastic Four. They had technically it was three, but they had two shots within the last twenty years that where they were like, "This is the Fantastic Four. Here you go," and it just was subpar. And they got the villains wrong. It just didn't work, you know. Like they didn't understand the characters. They didn't understand that yeah, that sort of thing. Talk about. I mean, I, I finally got to watch that piece of crap of the, the oh, Fantastic Four. I, no. I was like, I was like, I was like, let's see if it's bad as everyone's saying it is. And it I is. Was like, this is just. This is. I'm so glad I didn't buy this movie. I'm like, bro. I'm like, and that's the one thing my wife's like, because I always said I want to buy all the Marvel movies, all that, and she was like, you know, she liked the first Fantastic Four. And then I'm like, you haven't watched the other one. She was why I'm like, because you will never watch it. Trust me, it is yeah. just straight up garbage. It's like, hot the trash. It's horrible. The acting is horrible. The whole thing is horrible. The whole like, thing just seen doesn't a work. Movie that I didn't want to watch, and that's the one thing I haven't, we haven't seen actually yet is Dark Phoenix either. I've heard that one's not that good. 
Dark Phoenix, I thought was getting worse reviews than it deserved. It wasn't that, I mean, th there's a history to it. And I'd like to tell you that on a different video or something, because there, there was a lot that it, it got screwed by Captain Marvel, actually. Uh, wow. It's it's interesting uh, story, but um, they had made Dark Phoenix while Captain Marvel was under complete secrecy and wraps, but and no one knew anything about Captain Marvel. But Captain Marvel came out before Dark Phoenix, uh, and it, and it was the same film. It was the same. It was like everything story plot character beats. Uh, the villains were both the Skrulls originally. Hmm. And then they said, holy cow, like when they saw the trailers for Captain Marvel, they're like, we can't, what are we going to do? We're going to get crushed. This is going to be awful. It's going to be like, it's going to be like the force awakens. And everyone realizes it's literally just a new hope rewired. You know? <laughs> yes. And it's like, it's the same thing. Slightly changed. You know, it's like, it's like, just change the words in the homework. So the teacher doesn't know. No, no. The teacher knows, you know, like we all know. know. Yeah. They even said it in the movie. <laughs> He says, yeah. it the same time as Death Star? No, this is the Death Star. This is Star Killer. It's like, yeah. wow, it's just bigger. Yeah, just yeah, it's just bigger with a name that references a video game. It's like, come on, dude. Like, I'm trying to I'm trying to like this film. And yeah, but but what happened was they, they ended up getting screwed and uh the, the guys over at Fox freaked out. They're like, oh no, like what are we gonna do? And then the shareholders said, You're not allowed to move the release date. The shareholders said, you cannot change the date. We're getting paid when we said we're getting paid. That's it. And so then they said, okay, then we have, I think it was a month and a half to go in, reshoot, re-edit, and try to get this film out different than it was ready to be to, to be in the theaters. And uh, and they got screwed. It, it ended up not being terrific, unfortunately. It wasn't even, I mean, a lot of people were, hated it outright. I thought it was actually better than half of the x-men films hmm. even yeah. with even with all of its problems the action was really freaking cool so right. I'll, have to, I'll, have to, I'll have to watch it then yeah that's the one that we didn't want to go see because of the, tr the the it looked it looked yeah okay my wife did not my wife did not like it bro and and she was very upset me and my buddy we watched it we we're like hey dude that's sick you've never like nightcrawler he had his he had sick sick moments totally like what the nightcrawler we all wanted to see. So like Storm same thing, Magneto sicker than you've ever seen him. Like um like Cyclops had like really great moments. I felt like they got Cyclops better in this in Dark Phoenix than they have in any other X-Men film. They never once got him right in an X-Men film ever except yeah. in in this one. And it was even though he's younger which is not what I prefer for my Cyclops. I want him to look like Superman, literally. Like I want him to literally, you know, like comic book, jacked out of his face, leader, bold, strong, leader of the X-Men, little hard-headed, but he's got, you know, he's got the best of intentions, that kind of thing. Not, not some douche. <laughs> he's not, he's not just some, you know, tool bench that, that is just a, a, a plot point to keep Wolverine and Jean Grey from hooking up. That's not it. You know, that's not, you've got him wrong. And, uh, that's kind of how I – so I actually – I appreciated Dark Phoenix for for what I knew it was, the Frankenstein that they kind of had to make it because of Captain Marvel, which I, I also like Captain Marvel. I thought they should have just said, you know what? Screw it. We both have the scrolls. We both have the rights to use the scrolls. It's not just Marvel at the time, you know, before Fox got bought out, of course. Um, but it was just – yeah. It just – it was what it, it – it was what it became, and it became worse than I think it should have been. <laughs> yeah so i don't know <laughs> my little rants <laughs> about the x-men i'm a huge i love x-men to to x-men is to me i think what green lantern is to you like oh, i probably all, all day oh. long dude x-men is like is my jam dude oh i just got i just got the the original x-men the first five x-men funko pops with the classic like dark blue cows and the yellow yeah, um nice like it's so it's so cool and uh, the Fantastic Four ones just came out as well because Marvel's getting ready to um, uh, make announcements soon about about Fox about the Fox characters. I bet you it, what's going to happen is Eternals. This is like my hot take, real quick, before the film comes out. Um, Eternals is going to launch the 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 groundwork for X Men 
and the Inhumans, but it's also going to make a mention for the Fantastic Four, I think. Yeah. And it's it's going to it's going to blast everything that Fox characters need to exist inside the MCU, excuse me. And um I, I think that that's basically why they're doing the Eternals now. Um otherwise there's not really a whole lot of reason. Like the Eternals aren't heroes, you know? Like <laughs> they're they're celestial beings often that heroes would then, you know, possibly encounter if they're like if the stories are legendary enough. I think you were introduced by the Fantastic Four, so the Fantastic Four is probably going to be a big part of it because the Fantastic Four explain, explored more of the cosmic, and they yeah. said they even wanted to go cosmic. I'm hoping so, man. That the Fantastic Four were explorers. They were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were uh, adventurers and explorers in the in the cosmos, but also in all different aspects of the universe, like the microverse and and that sort of thing. So. Um, there's a lot to be explored, and Atlantis with Namor, mm -hmm. tons of things. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm really excited, man. The same way I want them to explore the world, the universe, the stories of different characters, and and all that stuff in the Fantastic Four and in the X Men. I'm actually that to me is is the level of excitement I actually have in my in my comic book heart uh, for the for the Green Lantern series because it's going to be. They're going to be exploring worlds. They're going to be like probably a lot of it will take place on Earth, but they did say that one at least one storyline will take place in outer space, and that could be actually if they introduce Kyle. Kyle ran around a lot in space. Yeah, he didn't stay in, on, on Earth a lot. He ran around on space doing missions. Yeah, so it could be Kyle Rayner. We could introduce a third person. Yeah, and they they did say there would be three Green Lanterns, and then made mention. So if that, that's that's, read that's, that's, what I, that's what I read the article was there's three – there's two on Earth, one on space, and then they're going to talk about Sinestro. And it's like – Is that yeah. four or three then? You know what I, I mean? Like three. Because Sinestro – He was a Green Lantern. Line, Sinestro does actually like come back to be a Green Lantern and how – like it, 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 it's, it's weird. It's a weird line. Like I have to read that thing again. But I got – like, How yeah. could there ever be trust then, you know? Oh, no. It, it was literally like – they like how like broke the law and they're like, yeah, we are taking your ring away and we're giving it to Sinestro to, for Sinestro, like as a punishment to Sinestro. Right. And, Sinestro, and the whole 52 run is like Sinestro, like how's like, like missing being a Green Lantern. And Sinestro's like, if you want to be a Green Lantern, you're going to do what I say. Yeah. And he does it. <laughs> and it's this whole line of like, you know, Sinestro still being a dick. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> it's, I mean, Hey. Yeah, no, for sure, and um, I'm I'm excited, man. I I, I think that uh, I think that this will be it has potential to be my favorite DC TV show. Um, because I think right now my favorite is probably um, I really like I really like Titans and the and the Flash of of all of them. I think right now, if I if I could just quantify the first three and a half seasons or maybe four seasons of arrow then yeah arrow would have to take it but given the whole like what i you know everything about the about arrow as a whole i think probably either titans or uh or titans the flash be, yeah titans is a good one i like the, i like that one um, yeah that's the one thing i'm kind of that's the thing I was, I was i was hearing that it might go on hbo so that's why i kind of switched over to hbo right yeah, and it, it probably um, it probably will make an appearance there. They did say that some shows were going to be doing both. Some shows would be on Doom HBO. Patrol. Yeah, yeah, Doom Patrol on HBO. That may that one makes sense though because that one is very mature. That yeah. one, that one is that's not for Grant kids Morrison. or teens. If you rate Grant Morrison's one, that's the one where he was on acid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a Danny the Living Street. Yep. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that content, dude. That was the thing. Like, I like my my best friend's a huge Green Lantern. Uh, sorry, a Grant Morrison fan, and he was always bragging about this guy called Danny the Street. And I was like, the Living Street. And I'm like, okay. And then they did. It. I'm like, yeah. I wasn't at the time. I couldn't confirm yes or no if it was on it yet. If it was based off it run. And then that happened. I said, I texted him. I said, hey, guess what? He goes, what? It's based off his run. He goes, how do you know? I go, I just saw Danny the Living Street. And he's like, yep. Dude, it's uh, it's crazy. I and that's one thing that I I love about DC is that they don't try to make everything seem real world realistic. They just said 
this is a comic book show. We're going to make a freaking comic book show. Yep. We don't give a rip. And Doom Patrol was when I when I realized they didn't give any rips because yeah. I was like, they don't give they don't give two you know two cares at all. I'm going to try to keep it PG a little, but they don't get they don't <laughs> they don't give any concern to anybody's like oh the costumes have to look a certain way or oh the you know the why they named this or why can't they just be called agent whatever no no screw you and your non your non ability to use your imagination. CGI has come a long way since the Phantom Menace. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're not talking Jar Jar Binks anymore. This is some crazy stuff they're doing on DC. Even with low budgets, they have some skilled people over there doing some awesome stuff that makes like friggin' uh, even Beast Boy's tiger form look really, really good. You know, almost realistic level good for a tiger. You know, it's like, it's pretty cool. I was like, oh my gosh, I wish he'd do more animals. But, uh, you know, I'll stick with the tiger for now until we can get him to be full Beast Boy. But yeah, uh, no complaints from me. What are your thoughts, man? About Titans? Titans? Or just in, in general, like CGI? In general, CGI. So, uh, uh, comic it, books it, come it, to it, life. It's gone from a long ways. I mean, we were talking earlier about Smallville, uh, you know. Um, yeah. Smallville, when it first started, like, I remember watching it and seeing them do, like, when he ran, like, they just sped it up. Like, that's all they did. Like, they ran, it was just, and they made this little yeah. sound, just ran really fast. And they, they could see that they just sped up the clip. And then they changed it to... You know, as the, as the thing got better and better, the seasons got better and better. They had more and more of a budget. They had more and more able to do more special effects, and yeah. So I mean, as, as a whole, like CGI has gotten as as improved a lot in our history now. Right. Yeah. And uh, when it when it sucks, it's noticeable. Mm -hmm. And so, like, when you when you can sit down and watch a show like Titans, or you can sit down and watch a show like Doom Patrol, and you're like, oh my gosh, that that you're not drawn away by bad CGI, even on a show with a low budget. That's that's good. That's confidence building. And I think both of those shows had better CGI at times than I think the Green Lantern movie did. You know, and it and I'm, that's not to bag on Green Lantern, but just that this next Green Lantern, I think has a lot of confidence because they already know they made those mistakes. It's, it was one of the most public flops of all time, but they now know what they have to do. And with lesser shows with lesser budget, they've been able to accomplish even more, you mm -hmm. know? So I think it'll be great. I think, I, I think there's no reason to worry here about this show. I just yeah. can't wait. To, I can't wait to see who they cast, man. Yeah. That's You're what getting, I'm wondering on. Get Jensen Ackles in there, bro. <laughs> they need to. He's been he's been been petitioning. Yeah, dude. He's been wanting to do it. I mean, I could see him doing it. Yeah, he's been wanting to do it. Uh, fans want him to do it. I remember what you were part of it when we did the fan casting yep. summit. Um, we had we had a fan casting summit brought. I, I don't think it was like twenty something guys together to do the fan casting summit. Uh, fan casters on Instagram. For those who don't know, who are watching this video, haven't seen a summit. It's basically I get thirty guys off of Instagram who have nerd channels like we do and they talk about casting and casting for roles um i brought them together got their picks for the for the green lantern in the dceu which we now know is actually going to be this show probably and possibly not a green lantern movie we don't know could be both um but very likely just this w the number one pick for for hal jordan in the in the dceu on what will now become an HBO Max series was Jensen Ackles. People want Jensen in the role, and it was—I uh, think it was a tie. I think it was a two-way split between him and Army Hammer. Well, Army Hammer was the one that everyone wanted him to be, but I mean, Jensen Ackles looks like—if you take Hal Jordan, you look at him. Yeah, it's—it's a straight-up match. It's perfect, dude. And there, you wouldn't need to do anything. Like he's no. in the right shape. He looks the part. Chin, the right hair. I mean, you could right just height too. Yeah, the right. Yeah, that's another point I didn't think about. He has pretty much the right height. Uh, just put put a suit on him. He's good to go. He's already working with the CW for goodness sakes, and his contract is ending like now with yeah. uh, with uh, with the uh, Supernatural. I mean, I mean Jerry Padalecki's doing uh, Walker Walker Texas Ranger. I'm actually really excited for that. I think that's a good. I think that's a that's fun be a thing. Great pick. I'm not gonna lie. 
Yeah, dude, I I liked uh, the old Walker Texas Ranger with um, with uh, Chuck Norris. <laughs> I I like that show. I mean, it's cheesy and all that all that stuff, but uh, but it was still fun. You know, it's like still fun to watch. Just watch. It's pretty much the same episode every time. You know, guy comes to town. There's a criminal. Something happens. Roundhouse kick. The face. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but what, waiting for that roundhouse kick. It'll be really fun to see Jared uh, 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 Jared Padalecki do a roundhouse kick where his he's kicking the guy square in the face, but he doesn't have to lift his leg over his waist. We'll have to see. Because he, he's so freaking tall. Yeah, we'll have to see. <laughs> we'll have to see I know. We'll find out how that goes. But I'm excited. Yeah. So anyway, um, really cool, man. Hey, I, I really appreciate you, you know, like sharing your expertise and your ideas about Green Lantern with me about this topic, because this is one that I've been wanting to talk about for uh, since they launched this uh, or since they uh, posted on January 15th, which was five days ago. Um, as soon as I saw it, I was like, Comic Man Jake needs to talk, bro. It's, it's got to come from him. No one else, bro. <laughs> Thanks. You're the man, it. dude. I appreciate it. For those of you guys who are, are watching right now, be sure before you leave now, I want you to go. I want you to subscribe to Comic Man Jake. He's got tons of videos online right now that you can go and you can check out. Peruse through his library. He covers some like movies and reviews and things like that. But he's an expert at comic book knowledge, especially if you love Green Lantern. You came to the right place and pretty much everything DC. Um, you read you read Marvel as well. Um, I, read, I read a little bit of everything. I mean, I'm getting more into the indies and stuff. I mean, I read Marvel. I read DC. DC is my home thing, so I usually try to do more on the DC line. Right, right. And and in the DC world, I would consider you uh, basically an expert. <laughs> like you've got basically I mean, a lifetime's I, knowledge. I, uh, thank you. You're too kind, man. You're way too kind. I don't consider <laughs> myself an expert on that. But yeah, we'll go. I'll take yeah. the compliment. I, I've been a I've been a fan of Marvel and DC. My pretty much my entire life as of the age of probably six or seven. Oh, yeah, um, same age. But my parents had to take away. My parents had a uh, Batman <laughs> costume, and they literally had to take it away from me. Yeah, yeah, because that's I pretty... wore it every day. That was me with Spider Man. <laughs> it was pretty much the same suit, just getting all stinky and stuff. That and Power Rangers. But uh, but oh my gosh, dude, yeah, it's it's so great. And uh, I bow to your knowledge, bro. You're like you're the <laughs> king, dude. <laughs> you're, you're way too kind. You're way too kind. No way, bro. But I appreciate it. Anyways, thanks, man. Uh, everybody, like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on notifications to be alerted right away when we go live next time. That way you won't miss a single thing and you can check in with the lives and be a part of the stuff of Legend or Comic Man Jake if he ever goes live. So uh, that's what you got to do to uh, take care of us on YouTube so we can take care of you with some content. Anyways, you guys are the best. Comic Man, uh, have a great day, bro. You too. And everybody, stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video, or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.